This week on Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson. One of the things that I can remember being in college at Ball State University in the late 1980s, and I, I was thinking about being a journalist, a sports journalist, and I thought this would be the greatest job in the history of the world because it'll never feel like work. I'm just going to sporting events and writing about sports. It was that way for a long time. I never felt like I was actually working. Now, with I just don't have the same enthusiasm and respect for modern professional athletes, their values and their lack of insight into how they're being manipulated and used to undermine America frustrates me uh, tremendously. But <clears throat> they, they, as important as athletes are as influencers, it kind of pales in comparison to uh, what I think are the two most important groups in terms of, of expanding public discourse and making sure we still have freedom of speech. I, I literally point to, and you know, this the thought may make you giggle a little bit, but it's up to comedians and ministers to protect public discourse. Those are two professions that have always been authorized to speak uncomfortable truths. And I think comedians and ministers have failed. He is fearless about choosing faith and freedom over fear. We have longtime sports broadcaster Jason Whitlock on the show today. Jason, him and I both have similar roots in the Midwest. He played football at Ball State University and then went on to write for the Kansas City Star for many years before, you know, joining ranks with ESPN and Fox Sports and is now with The Blaze. And he has his show Fearless with Jason Whitlock, which you can check out anywhere you get your podcasts or on the Blaze app. I myself went to the University of Missouri Journalism School, studied sports broadcasting there, and have an acquaintance with TJ Moe, who he has on the show quite a bit. So it's a pleasure to sit down with Jason and talk about some of these hot to topics because he never backs down. You know, you see him on Fox News and different various programs talking about things like CRT and um, how these sports leagues are addressing these hot topics like COVID and things like that. We here at We the Patriots USA.org have a CRT case or trying to help out some parents in Connecticut who received severe backlash, they allege, when they spoke up about CRT. One of the parents alleging that their son was sexually assaulted at school for speaking up against CRT. So make sure to head over to wethepatriotsusa.org to check that out. They're also really taking on several uh, religious freedom cases. And Jason is a fearless warrior for Christ. He'll talk about his faith and how that plays into his profession as well. So without further ado, here's Jason Whitlock. Freedom is non-negotiable. Mandates, free speech, cancel culture, parental rights, these are real people that have stood up for their freedoms no matter what. Welcome into Faithful Freedom with Taryn Gregson, presented by We the Patriots USA, helping everyday Americans defend their God-given rights. Jason, we are so appreciative of you to join the show today. Tell us what it has been like for you to launch your show Fearless, to go to the blaze, and you've always been pretty fearless, let's face it, about voicing your opinion, but do you just feel even more free now? What's it like to be able to speak as you wish? Uh, I certainly feel freer uh, than when I worked in corporate media at ESPN and Fox Sports and even the Kansas City Star, although... I don't want to throw the Kansas City Star in there because at that time, newspapers, you had a lot of freedom and you could kind of say what you thought. And I, I never felt restrained. I, I do think that in the last decade uh, at major platforms, corporate platforms like ESPN and Fox Sports, it's very difficult to be truthful, uh, particularly if you have an opinion that conflicts with the left. And so, you know, I think 
coming to the blaze and leaving corporate media uh, has certainly been liberating. And there's, you know, I, I've probably never been uh, more honest or more fearless than I am uh, right now. Is it fun to be able to tackle some of these subjects or is it kind of pressure packed to be able to talk about some of these controversial topics? Is it fun? Uh, I think speaking the truth is always fun, uh, but I'm a weird person in terms of I don't look for fun as it relates to work. I look for satisfaction, reward, impact, and uh, I'll have fun away from work. Uh, you know, and, and things seem so crazy right now that, you know, I'm halfway spooked half the time. Like, just like, I can't, I'm 54 years old, Taryn. Uh, I've seen so such a dramatic change in uh, the hostility towards truth. Uh, and it, it's kind of frightening. I just, I worry about the country uh, we're going to leave for young people like yourself. Uh, I feel like my generation has, has let you guys down in a major way. We've been asleep at the will. And so it, it, it's, it's, it's satisfying being able to say what you think and to have a kind of impact uh, that me and my show have. Uh, I, I can't call it fun because to be honest with you, a lot of things that I, I say, I was like, I wish I didn't have to say this. I wish I didn't have to point out how dishonest uh, the corporate media is and how misled the public is. I, I wish I didn't have to do that. It's pretty crazy to feel that way now, right? I mean, I have a background in sports journalism, just like you. Um, that's where I was prior to this podcast. And for many of us, we get into this because of the love of the game, because we love sports and you yourself, you know, played football collegiately and everything. So is, has it been a slow progression for you or to move away from sort of that love of the game approach that you bring to sports or has it felt like it just sort of happened all at once over the past year or two? Uh, it's been a little bit longer process for me. It's been about five years, ever since the Colin Kaepernick thing started and the way athletes hopped on board and are slaves to social media, uh, fearful of crossing ways with China. Uh, it has undermined my enjoyment of sports. One of the things that I can remember being in college at Ball State University in the late 1980s, and I, I was thinking about being a journalist, a sports journalist, and I thought this will be the greatest job in the history of the world because it'll never feel like work. I'm just going to sporting events and writing about sports. And <clears throat> that it was that way for a long time. I never felt like I was actually working. Now, with I just don't have the same enthusiasm and respect for modern professional athletes, uh, you know, their values and their lack of insight into how they're being manipulated and used to undermine America frustrates me uh, tremendously. Um, but yeah, and so I just, I don't, I watch football because I, I love my Ball State Cardinals and so I still watch college football passionately. I watch the NFL not as passionately as I used to. Uh, I watch less games this year than probably any time in my life since about age 10. Uh, I, I watch the NBA during the playoffs. I haven't really paid attention to the regular season. I, I just, my enthusiasm for the athletes is just, just not strong enough to, enjoy, and, and then you just never know what type of political messaging they're going to slip in during the commercial breaks or whatever. And so it, it, it's not as fun as it used to be. And it's, and my passion for watching and engaging in sports isn't what it used to be. 
I think a lot of sports fans feel that way these days as well. We used to view sports as an escape and um, you can't really escape any of this now, even when you're watching sports. You mentioned how the athletes and their values and how they go along with some of these narratives. I get a lot of messages, um, private messages from, from athletes saying that they feel the same way, but you know, obviously they're not speaking out about it. Do, how important is it for those like Aaron Rodgers, Kyrie Irving, Novak Djokovic to come out in public and to share a, <clears throat> another side of the viewpoint? I think it's very important and I, I'm really enthusiastic about Aaron Rodgers and Kyrie Irving and, and the stance that they took as it related to the vaccine mandates. And, uh, but <clears throat> they, they, as important as athletes are as influencers, it kind of pales in comparison to uh, what I think are the two most important groups in terms of, of expanding public discourse and making sure we still have freedom of speech. I, I literally point to, and you know, this the thought may make you giggle a little bit, but it's up to comedians and ministers to protect public discourse. Those are two professions that have always been authorized to speak uncomfortable truths. And I think comedians and ministers have failed. I think a lot of ministers have gone woke and, uh, you know, we in invented this, we didn't invent the word inclusion and in inclusivity or in inclusion, but we started using it in a way that's new. And now that's all everybody focuses on. Are you inclusive? Are you inclusive? And, and so I, I think that has made ministers pipe down. And then I think comedians all for a five-year run all said, hey, there's only one joke we want to crack and we're all gonna crack Donald Trump jokes. Uh, and we're all gonna be part of the resistance. And that's just not healthy for, and, and ridicule is, is a part of basically shaming people to deal with the truth. And so when I look at what's going on with Bill Maher, when I look at what's going on with Joe Rogan, I get a little hopeful, Dave Chappelle, like the comedians are finally starting to fight back and want these restraints off. And, and so those are the two groups, ministers and comedians that I look to for like, hey, you guys gotta be more honest. You guys gotta speak truth to power. That's always been your role. Uh, you know, it's been the custom in, in America and in societies that believe in free thought and democracy and uh, independent thinking. And so, uh, you know, I, I think Joe Rogan being truthful is more important than LeBron James. I agree with that. And, you know, Joe Rogan's a comedian too, and, and himself, and he's, I've watched some of his comedy specials and he's always made fun of both sides of the political spectrum. And it's funny, right? If we can't crack a joke these days um, or watch sports as an escape, where, where are we going in, in all of this? You mentioned, you know, ministers and you've, you've never been shy about your faith. And I, for one, appreciate that. And I know that other sports fans do as well. How much do you think that plays into the discussion moving forward? I mean, athletes themselves, they've not been shy about their faith. You hear them, you know, thank God and Jesus Christ, you know, when they, when they win or when they have a special achievement, um, how do you think that plays into things as we move forward and, and heal? Uh, I think that we got to remember professional athletes for the most part are pretty young. And so uh, that means they're young in their walk with Christ. And so I think it's easy and understand when I was their age to say, I'm a believer and I thank God, but do they fully understand what being a Christian means, what the responsibilities are. And, and so I, I'm hopeful, but, but this whole society and because of the addiction to social media, particularly Twitter, 
Twitter is probably the most secular place on earth. And um, athletes are so addicted to Twitter that they don't understand that the stuff that comes out of their mouth, the things that they think to say, they're constantly thinking about, hey, how's this going to land? How's it going to play on Twitter and on social media? And what they don't think about is like, hey, I'm a Christian. How is what I'm saying and what I'm representing and what I'm doing, how is that going to land with God and my biblical worldview? And that's where social media has really been a, a hindrance on speaking truth and on uh, just being honest uh, because social media is a stage. And so people tend to perform when they're on a stage. They're not their authentic self. They're thinking about how's the audience going to react. And we used to have a society, and again, that was not perfect by any stretch, but before social media and before you know, America became super secular, people literally did used to think about, I wonder what God will think about what I say, what my actions are. And so when we look at the progress we've made in America, along racial lines in particular, it was really driven by our Christian faith. And it's like, hey, this slavery thing isn't right with God. And so I'm willing to sacrifice my life and, and fight in this civil war because I wanna be right with God. People made great sacrifices during the 50s and 60s uh, to take down Jim Crow laws and establish civil rights. And, and I'll, again, that was a faith-driven Martin Luther King, that was a faith-based driven movement uh, and, and where people were thinking about, hey, am I gonna be on the right side of God? I think a lot of people talk now about being on the right side of history and that's a mistake. History is written and controlled by whoever's in power. And, and so you're really trying to hit a moving target. Whoever's in power, I want to be on the right side of them. They're going to control the narrative of history. But, but you know, God and the Bible are unshakable. And, uh, you know, thousands of years of collective wisdom in the Bible, it, it doesn't change with whoever's in power. It doesn't change based on the season or the weather. It is what it is. And so... Uh, I, I, I just, I hope that as, as I, I'm prayerful and hopeful that at some point America will return a bit more to its Judeo-Christian foundation. Uh, that's what, it, it ser that culture serves non-believers. Again, e even if, take Bill Maher, who's anti-religion, I think he's starting to figure out like, hey man, a Judeo-Christian culture actually protects my freedom of speech better than this woke PC culture that we have established through these social media apps. Taking a quick break to encourage you to head over to wethepatriotsusa.org. This is how you can get directly involved in the fight for our freedoms. Hit the donation tab on the homepage. Your tax deductible gift will assist this 501c3 organization working to protect religious freedom, medical freedom, parental rights, educational freedom, first and second amendment freedoms, and so much more. Head to wethepatriotsusa.org now. And back to our discussion with Jason Whitlock. Speaking about who has the power right now on the business side of things here on this earth, do you think that sports fans are not considering the amount of power that they have in all of this as much as they should? We all feel like, you know, the leagues and such are the ones driving most of this from the top down, but should consumers take back some of that power a little bit more and, and who they're watching, when they're watching and, and where they're spending their money on all of this? It would be nice. Uh, I, I, I do think it's happening a bit, but the issue, Taryn, is that 
uh, America has been so overrun by uh, foreign money, particularly China. Uh, and so our global corporations, Nike and all the other global corporations that are attached to the sports and sports TV, their primary concern is China and the 1.3 billion people there versus the 300 million people here. And so this is like what people don't understand about being a global citizen or why globalism is harmful. It undermines American culture. When you think of yourself as a global citizen, you don't really care about American traditions. You, you are trying to make as much money as you can, incur as much favor with China right now uh, because they have the biggest consumer base. And, and so I, I, I just think these issues are so complicated, but easy to explain if people will take the time to listen. Uh, and, you know, I, 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 I don't know, the, the, the whole technology thing and, and the social media apps and the whole uh, San Francisco tech companies or Silicon Valley tech companies and their global agenda uh, interferes with America's agenda and America keeping our culture unique uh, and, and the best culture and system uh, the world has ever known. Uh, well, now the, the, the global corporations and the influencers that they pay, uh, they appear to me to be shorting the United States and going long on China. And that's why, you know, it, it's hard for uh, consumers to have the impact that they used to have here in America. And so I don't think the NBA really cares that much about television ratings. I don't think they care that much about uh, in-house attendance. I, I, I think that when David Stern was a commissioner of the NBA and, and, and Phil Knight and Nike sold the NBA on a vision of becoming an international league and the possibility of some mega television contract from China, I, I think the NBA has been positioning itself for that for 20 years. And, and I don't think they are gonna turn back from that. Uh, you know, I, I try to tell people a lot of times, like we think we have a passion for basketball here. It, it's nothing compared to China's passion for basketball. And so a lot of times when LeBron James and these athletes, what they're talking about, they've been to China, they go to China every summer and they sit there and think, man, it's for a basketball player, it's better in China than it is in America. And that explains why they're so quick to uh, smear America and while remaining silent on China. So uh, where do we go from here then, especially whenever it relates to China? You know, we've got the Olympics in China. The NBA seems to be completely, you know, in all in on China. Is it voices like Ennis Cantor, Freedom and people like that that are that are going to make a difference? Or how do we or does the government have to step in on its on America and sports leagues involvement with the CCP and things like that? Or how do where do we go? Taryn, I only, there's only one solution. And I say it over and over and over again, but it's gonna come down to uh, believers mm -hmm. and, and, and Jesus. And, and again, when you take your identity in Christ, and, and so, because right now people are taking their identities based on their political views. I'm a conservative, I'm a liberal, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, or on their sexuality. I'm trans, I'm gay, I'm heterosexual, I'm this or that, or they're based, I'm black, I'm a 
BIPOC. I'm, again, all these other identities other than Christ. And, and so that perverts when, when you make your race, again, the Bible talks a lot, Christianity talks about idolatry. And it's not just about LeBron James or Steph Curry, they're an idol. Anything can be an idol, including your race, including your sexuality. And you build your whole life around uh, living up to your sexuality or your skin color. Uh, those things are going, are, are and will continue to divide America. When we used to be a bit more concerned about taking our identity in Christ, and that was our first thought, it, it, it changed our behavior and brought out the best of us and brought us together. And so, you know, we're just going to have to, those of us that are believers are going to have to be better examples and have to be better lights unto the world and, and hope, because again, Christianity and Jesus are, are undefeated when properly applied, but too many <clears throat> people that claim to be believers <clears throat> actually prioritize many other things ahead of their Christian identity. And until those of us that understand this mistake, uh, explain it and live it out so that people are more attracted to uh, taking their identity in Christ, uh, we're gonna continue to stumble and fall here in America. Amen to that. I wanna get your opinion on um, how these sports leagues have approached COVID. I mean, we can all kind of, uh, we all know how they did it and how forceful they were with the vaccines and the shots. I would like to know your thoughts on why you think we are seeing so many adverse reactions for athletes around the world. We see a lot of soccer players dropping during competition after receiving the shot. And here in America, we haven't really seen too many athletes suffer from our knowledge, adverse reactions to the, to the shot. Why do you think that is? Do you think that these leagues are not as truthful to what their vaccine, uh, how many of these players have actually gotten the vaccine? Do you think they're not being as truthful? Why do you think there's such a disparity between American athletes and European well, and again, let me be clear. I'm outside my area of expertise answering this question. And so take this with a grain of salt. But uh, I think soccer is the most cardio intensive sport there is. Uh, these guys run forever. Uh, and so, you know, America isn't really a soccer culture. Our biggest sports, football, basketball, baseball. And so I, I think <clears throat> over in Europe, you just have more people playing soccer. Uh, and, and so I think that cardio intensity may play a role in, uh, because again, you know, COVID and the vaccines, I think affects your, lungs and and breathing capacity and things like that and so but just I, I, i'm totally speculating on that and so i, I don't want to say too much <laughs> i know you're not a medical expert by any means yeah. but i i wanted to get your opinion on that i would also like to know your thoughts on college athletics where it goes from here with the implementation you know of nil and we just keep seeing more and more business inserted into college athletics. While at the meantime, so many people are starting to, to question the universities in general, just the, um, what they're teaching our students and, and their, the possible indoctrination that's happening on these campuses. So while we're it's sort of being attacked from the education standpoint. We're also, you know, coming at it from the college sports standpoint with, with the NIL and things like that. Where do you see college sports going 
amongst all of this? I think that's a great question. I, I actually thought that uh, the NIL deal would cause more chaos than what we've actually seen. College football seemed to go on just like normal from the outside looking in. I'm sure coaches will have a different take on that. They're dealing with it day to day. Uh, I, you know, I just think the NIL stuff has just made, uh, has just injected more money and potential headaches and chemistry issues within teams. But as a fan, again, I'm kind of removed from that. That's a, a coaching problem and issue. And, and so um, I, I, I thought there was a better solution the name, image, and likeness. Uh, I don't think name, image, and likeness actually serves college sports the best. I, I, I but, but it, it, it's so new, and uh, there's so little. I think real reporting. You know, journalism is pretty dead, and you know, people aren't going to question athletes getting paid and making money. And uh, it, so it, 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 it's hard for me to speculate. I just know I wouldn't want to be a coach in this era. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I, I'm somewhat happy for the athletes, uh, but, you know, young people and money. I used to be young. Uh, I'm glad, you know, that, that I, I don't know. I, I'm happy for the athletes to some degree that they're getting a piece of the pie. I wish that college athletics had, had gone a different route in fixing this because there was a problem and that they did need to share some of the wealth with the athletes, particularly the high profile ones that drive ratings and have professional careers in their future. Uh, but I'm not sure if this was the, the perfect or the, even the right solution. And, and we'll see over five to six to 10 years what the NIL's impact has been. To me, as a, as a college sports fan, just taking a backseat and being a fan, it's more the transfer rules and one and done and things like that, that have hurt college sports, in my opinion, from a fan standpoint of being able to follow your favorite players and or teams. It's just, um, to me, I'm curious to see where college sports is going to end up in the next several years because of all of this and fans not really being quite as passionate or plugged in because of that. Oh, I think that particularly in college basketball, that's been going on for a long, long, long time. And eventually it will happen in college football as well. Uh, but it, it, it may not, the college football system and, you know, retaining the players for three to four years, the way they do, uh, gives them a great advantage over college basketball, uh, which, you know, these guys, the best players leave after one year. All right. So I'll let, as we let you go here, just kind of tell us, you know, do you have any exciting news coming up on fearless with Jason Whitlock? What's it like to be there in Nashville? You know, tell us a little bit about what's going on on your end. Love it here in Nashville. Been living here for about 18, 19 months. Uh, it feels like home. People here have treated me wonderfully. I don't know if you've ever been to Nashville, but it's a great town. A lot to do. A lot of good food. A lot of bad food. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> bad for you food, right? Yeah, bad for you food. Uh, <clears throat> but, I, you know, I, I'm so glad. I feel like I'll live here for the rest of my life. Uh, and so that's been great. And I just think with Fearless, we're going to keep trying to build our army uh, of soldiers that operate in a fearless way and want to uh, promote things that are positive for America and respectful of America and believe in the values that America was founded upon. And, and so I just think the show is going to continue to get better and better um, as we, you know, add contributors like uh, your former college uh, peer, TJ Mo. Uh, so maybe we'll have you on one day, Tara. 
Hey, I'm happy to come on. And I love TJ. He's a great guy. And uh, I think that your show is just one of many proof that sports fans are craving content like this. Sports fans align with these values. And I think that um, some of these leagues are maybe missing the boat on who part of their audience is on this. So I appreciate your show. When and where can people catch it? Well, go to youtube.com slash Jason Whitlock, and you can get all of our content there. Anywhere, podcast or played, Apple, Stitcher, wherever, you can get our, our content there. Uh, but what I mostly need you to do is go to youtube.com slash Jason Whitlock, hit that subscribe, hit the like button, get the notifications. Uh, and thank you, Taryn, for having me on your show. Thank you for your time today, Jason. I appreciate it. Huge thank you to Jason for coming on the show today and for the Blaze and other platforms like them for giving sports fans another choice for how they consume their sports news. I think that's huge as we move forward in all of this. I also want to encourage you to head over to wethepatriotsusa.org because myself, Brian Festa, the co-founder of the organization, we've been on a couple different of the Blaze programs sharing my story, sharing what We the Patriots USA is all about. He's been on the Steve Day Show and and several others with the blaze so we are friends of the blaze here at we the patriots usa and we appreciate everything they are doing to get the word out on what this nonprofit is up to and i also encourage you to head over to my social media pages check me out on telegram go follow us on rumble follow us on these places that they are not censoring us because we keep getting censored and that's something that jason was talking about the the loss of the freedom of speech even in the sports realm um, with all of this he's got the blaze platform that they can they can push things out and um, we encourage you to to go to rumble and places like that to to consume our content let me know who you want to hear from next here on faithful freedom with taryn gregson at Taryn Gregson on all the social media platforms. Reach out to me. I want to hear from you.